Hello there everyone, so today I would like to start our discussion on vectors. So, let's say that you are in a faraway land and you are lost. It would not help if someone approached you and told you simply that there is some post, some help, at 10 kilometers away. Because it could be in any direction, right? So if you're here, uh, 10 kilometers away over there could be there, here, 10 kilometers away in another direction uh, could be here. Um, depending on the direction you're considering, it could even be in the opposite direction. So for situations in which we not only need to know how large a quantity is, but also where is it pointing towards or where is it directed to, we need vectors. So we can split our classification of quantities into scalars and vectors. Scalars, they just have magnitude. So, for example, if you're talking about temperature, right? Temperature is just a value. You say, I don't know, 32 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius. Um, another one could be, I don't know, age. Um, weight or your mass um, not weight though <laughs> weight is a force but mass if you're talking about kilograms um, well my mass is let's say 70 kilograms that's a scalar you don't say my mass is 70 kilograms to the left or down that doesn't make any sense um, but when we're discussing about vectors then we will not only have a magnitude, right? That means how, how large your quantity is, but also a direction. And since we're discussing something that has both magnitude and direction, we need a way to express that. And that's uh, those quantities are expressed then by vectors because they can show magnitude and direction. So, examples could be force, um, momentum, velocity, acceleration, uh, magnetic field, electric field. There's so many different possibilities in physics, um, especially in physics, that we could spend like hours talking about those. But the most basic idea is that scalars, they only have magnitude, so only values and vectors they have both magnitude and direction so in the example that i discussed before with you that i just introduced to you during the beginning of this lesson if you're lost and someone gives you a map they not only have to tell you it's 10 kilometers away but also 10 kilometers to north let's say and then you can find yourself so you would need to know both magnitude and direction now that we know a few examples of vectors, how do we represent them then? So, it's actually much simpler than it looks. You simply draw some arrow in a scale diagram. So let's say that this is my x, y, and I can just represent as an arrow. Or, a more fancy word for an arrow is a directed line segment. So, that's called the directed line segment representation. I could give a name to this factor, I don't know, V. Um, I could measure some angle here, I don't know, 45 degrees. In this case, it's not. It's more like 30 degrees and such. Something important to notice is that the length of this vector, so how long it is, is proportional to its magnitude. So, longer arrows, so larger arrows, also means larger magnitudes. And obviously, smaller arrows, smaller arrows also um, smaller magnitudes. So, if in, a, in a problem, you were presented with, let's say, two vectors 
like those here and I'll call this U1 and U2 you could already assume that they are that U2 is twice the magnitude of U1 and also they're in the same direction because those lines are parallel take a look at the gradient gradient is 1 gradient is 1 so Consider this vector represented by this line segment here, OA. So there are a few ways for us to, to represent this. We could represent OA as a directed line segment from O to A. In books, often you see bold A. So I'm trying to make it bold here. We yeah, add bold or A with some carrot underneath it's a carrot now the magnitude of this vector can also be represented so if we use this directed line segment we put some bars before and after so this tells us the magnitude or the length of the factor. Another way is simply OA. That would mean the value. Or A here. We could use either the bold or the carrot notation as well. Some advanced studies you might, in some of them you might find um, the, the vector with an arrow on top. So in this case here we could just say that vector OA is the vector which emanates from O and terminates at A. And also that A is the position vector. Of A in respect to O or relative to O. So let's take a look at a couple of examples here. First, before we start, remember that north is, well, up, south is down, west is left, and east is right. Also, I'm considering a scale of one centimeter for each 10 meters per second on those examples. Also, I'm considering here that my graph paper is one centimeter across like this. So every five tiny blocks is one centimeter, so one large block would be two centimeters. So the first example here is for you to represent on a scale diagram, sketch the vector which represents the velocity of 15 meters per second on a westerly direction. So westerly. So westerly, it, it was southwestern, it was wrong, it's westerly. So westerly is simply to the left. So 15 meters per second, if we do our scale, if 10 is 1 centimeter, 15 is 1.5. So for the first case here, you would simply draw an arrow, and I'm going to choose this point here to start. I would have to draw this arrow one and a half units right so up to here more or less that's roughly how it would look like and 15 meters per second on the second problem here it's 40 meters per second of a bearing of 0 0.75 degrees so bearings they are measured from north north clockwise. So let's say 
this is our north here then we would have to measure 75 degrees um, so it's not horizontal because that would be 90 so something like this right I would have to measure if this was done on paper I would get a ruler and then since this is 40 and this is 10 this would mean 4 centimeter it would be equivalent to a length of 4 centimeters so but can I work Pythagoras and work out the, the length here yes however that's not the purpose here you should be able to however that's not the purpose now you would take much longer to to solve this problem so if this was an exam question and you had your ruler available the easiest way would be for it to go for your ruler and then just measure four centimeters and draw your vector now I'm missing here just to label my angle 75 degrees my vector is going that way remember that vectors they are directed line segments so they're not only line segments they're not a line they are directed lines so they need a tip you need to tell where they're going to and also we label our speed 40 meters per second so that should be it